weird creature from Oblivion. We're actually finishing that picture right now. It's a sci-fi western, which will be out theatrically next summer, the summer of 94. Uh, as you know, uh, Shrunken Heads is our first theatrical release, and that's something that's going to be playing through the country in the first six months of 94. It will be out around August, September at your local video store. So Bloodlust Subspecies 3. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You know, it's the last picture of the uh, subspecies series. Uh, we've really uh, enjoyed making them. I mean, you know, we went to Transylvania. We uh, put a lot of energy into these films. I know the subspecies series has a lot of fans. Uh, I just feel that we've kind of told the story. And, but if enough of you guys write in and feel we should continue making them, of course, we'll, we'll do just that. Uh, otherwise, we have Arcade coming up with all these brand new special effects. I'm real excited about that. And then we have a whole series of films you know, on the horizon. The Invisible, the Lurking Fear, that's another H.P. Lovecraft adaptation. You know, it's the first H.P. Lovecraft adaptation that we've done, that I've done really since the 80s, the mid-80s. You know, I did Reanimator and From Beyond. And even though the large majority of the Full Moon and Moonbeam films are all original, uh, thoughts and premises. Uh, once in a while, it really feels good to go back to uh, to Lovecraft and um, you know do something that uh, you know has really never been done before. We're also going to be uh, releasing probably within the year uh, Shadow over Innsmouth, which is another project that I've been looking forward to finally uh, making. And you know it's been years that we've been planning on it. So uh, basically, every month another full moon film. And I really appreciate you guys watching us, and I'll see you on the next edition of The Video Zone. Let Full Moon Entertainment take you into the world of the horrific and the romantic with Bloodlust, Subspecies 3. The third time's a charm for veteran director Ted Nicolo as he returns to Romania to wrap up the subspecies trilogy. This effect-filled epic has been laden with challenges, not the least of these being makeup effects. We were really lucky to have Wayne Toth and Norman Cabrera on the scene. They're like a couple of very cool guys and were really wonderful to work with in addition to being very talented and, and good with the actors too because when you have an actor in makeup for two hours every morning. The person who's doing the makeup on him had better be able to get along with him very well. Ow! <laughs> I'll give you hell. The makeup men are uh, scoundrels and uh, have clearly been hired for political purposes only. Uh, they are ruthless when they pull the makeup off. They will never work in my town again. Here I am with this rotten. <laughs> Who, me? I'm Wayne, your excellent host, and this is my excellent co-host, Norm, where we're here in Romania doing the special effects makeup for subspecies two and three, with a wide array of horrible things to scare you silly. It's basically a straightforward makeup. The only thing different is some of the situations where we have to do the makeup. The makeup trailer. The makeup for the grotesque vampire Radu can be described simply. There are foam latex appliances, four pieces that go on his forehead, cheeks, and chin, and then a, a cosmetic make makeup over that. And uh, it's basically the, the same makeup as in the first film with a little different coloration. <laughs> and another difference is, in the first film, they had uh, finger appliances, whereas at this time we have gloves to make it a little easier and cut down on the makeup time. I keep wanting to take off these gloves. The addition of Mummy called for some very detailed makeup work. Does it look pretty? Pretty? Mm -hmm. Yes, in a horrible, in a horrible sort of way. I like to look pretty. We have a mummy, which was designed by Wayne, special effects genius and master and everything. Basically, uh, her entire face and all her features and, and hands were entirely covered with makeup appliances in order to look all mummified and dried and, and corpsey looking. It takes about three hours to apply this makeup and, and it involves a headpiece which, which uh, covers her entire head, neck and shoulders and um, then there's a face piece that covers that, there's dentures and then there's hand appliances as well and then the costume covers everything else. For my next life I'm going to have hair. 
this part right here that I'm about to do is uh, when she says goodbye to her, her sight for the next several hours. I'm about to seal her up. The discomfort also adds to the feeling of what it's like to be um, a mummy. Once I had the full uh, head and, and face mask on, I had uh, limited visibility. In fact, I, I just had a, a slot out of my left eye and no peripheral vision. There you go, now you're up. But look at this, I didn't know I was wearing this brace. I don't know why that came on. <laughs> Up, Granny. Action. Not every cast member had to go through the rigors of makeup. Some had other difficult tasks. For this character of Bob, CIA operative, I wanted a little bit of comic relief, like a gun crazed, kind of uh, very serious uh, paramilitary sort of a character. And we uh, got an actor named Michael Della Femina who approached this role of CIA Bob with a relish. There was one strenuous task that Michael didn't have to perform. The only way into the castle is over this wall. Michael was not a free climber uh, of stones, so we had to hire these alpinists. Manly man over there in his little shorts. He's the climber. Failing to perform the climb didn't affect Michael's ability to brag about it. It was uh, some terrific climbing I think I did to get, to get up there. I did a lot of training for it, uh, about eight months uh, with some of the top, top uh, rock climbers in the world. And I think I'm gonna keep it as a hobby. I really enjoy the, the climbing process. Your turn, man. You can do that. No. That's why I climb with him. Even with their rigorous schedule, the actors did have time to make some interesting friends. Thank you, where'd you come from? <laughs> the most important thing about Jan Hajduk is he teaches me all the Romanian swear words. I know everything. I know how to, I know how to make my mother cry in this language. <laughs> She'd be so ashamed. <laughs> I've gotten very friendly with the farm animals. Oh, I got to milk a cow for my birthday. Oh, it's so great. I've been wanting to milk a cow for years. But this was Denise milking the cow. Can you get this from the waist up? Oh, so happy. Oh. To handle actors like these, it takes a very special director with some unique qualities. Number one. He's got to have a good wardrobe. I love these pants. They're going home with me, these pants. pants. They're, they're his pants, but they're mine now. Number two, he can control the weather. Director Ted Nicolau, praise for clouds. Number three, he has good hair. You can tell what time it is by Ted's hair. The amount of droop, yeah. Number four, he knows when to quit. Just a couple of close-ups. Okay, let's do it again. <laughs> Number five. Radu has some flowers. He yeah. has the right tool. Uh, uh, binoculars, two walkie-talkies, okay. guns, pistols, okay. bullets, rope, mm -hmm. graham crackers now. Number six, he knows how to eat. Water? Oh, Ted wants some of those. Ted? <laughs> what kind of director is that? Full Moon's favorite kind. One who makes a film you can sink your teeth into. Difford is an executive, but I think he's kind of more of an executive in his own mind than anything than in reality. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that I, I see him being an executive in, a, in kind of a, a company made up of a warehouse and a, and a desk and a chair. And what he's done is that he's gotten in cahoots with this scientist who has come up with this quite extraordinary idea for, a, um, for an arcade game. 
And my character, as I have played in many characters, is, has, is, it, it, he's not even immoral, he's just amoral. So he's willing to uh, test out the arcade game with these kind of wayward kids figuring if there are any untoward things that might happen, it's okay. He, he's a small little man who's willing to do anything for a buck. Uh, the part I play on Star Trek is it's a character that's big enough to, to, to handle a large canvas. Uh, I don't think differed, at least in the, in the way in which this uh, arcade was conceived, the, the character was not, was not thought of as being a, you know, a heavyweight. I don't know, I just, you know, I went out and I auditioned for Star Trek. I played, I was fortunate enough, I guess, to have the, be in the pilot. I was fortunate enough to turn it into a role that, that people liked. I, um, I don't know if I'm adept at it. I, the only thing is, is that as a kid, I watched an enormous amount of uh, science fiction. Science fiction movies were, 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 were while I think it was still uh, going to the matinee. I, I don't know if kids do this anymore, but going to the matinee on, uh, on, on uh, Saturday and you know just wading through two or three features at the matinee on Saturday was just like the best thing in the world. And Vincent Price and, and you know, all, the, all those kind of fun gothic horror movies and, and all the sci-fi movies. And I read a lot of sci-fi. And I wanted to do it. As a kid, I remember looking up at the screen and saying, I, I want to be in a sci-fi movie. I have kids who play a lot of video games. And, and I brought them down uh, to, to see this video game extraordinaire, of course. It's a, it is extraordinary on the finished film. Uh, it's a little, uh, for a kid who thinks that he's going, you know, my kids, when they, when they saw it on the set, they kind of walked up to it and, you know, didn't dare touch it because I had told them that it was sucking, sucking in every kid who played and sucking it into this. So they were like, my God, of course, it's a little disappointing when you see the, uh, just this kind of prop mock-up. But uh, in the movie itself, it's, 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 it's great. At Dante's Inferno, the ultimate video game has come to life. This is arcade. And it's all done in virtual reality. It's so real, you'll actually think that you're in the game board. I am arcade. If you want to play games, you pick the wrong machine. You gotta try this thing. And all you need to play are two quarters and your soul. I think the game is alive somehow. If you won't play the game by my rules, then I'll play in <laughs> your world. Now, two teenagers will play for their lives. Kiss reality goodbye forever. And enter an electronic world where virtual reality has become flesh and blood. Congratulations, Alex. You've almost made it to the final level. Arcade. Kiss reality goodbye. Oh.
horror's most terrifying imagination. H.P. Lovecraft's The Lurking Fear. Jack Death has made the future safe for humanity. Feel tough. Lady, I am tough. He's back. Hunting through history for a new breed of trancer. Jack! Jack, you all right? He's gone! Where is he? We've lost telemetry. He could be anywhere. Something tells me I'm not in Kansas. Swell. He's in a dimension of terror. A trancer. Who's meat I am? I'm nobody's meat. I'm Jack Death, and you're coming with me. Uh? This man can put an end to our nightmare. We must find him. I will capture this wolf's head. Trapped by his worst enemies. There's no way out of this place. Now, Jack Death will find his destiny. I'd follow a man like that into the gates of hell. On a world in need of a hero. Well, anything to save life. You're knocking at death's door, and I got the goddamn key. Trancers 4, Jack of Swords. In a hotel on Bodega Bay, a team of scientists will discover a secret. Beyond their imagination, for the moment, the secret of my magic and my puppets is safe. Maybe that's the formula Toulon wrote about. A power that a demon... It's showtime. <clears throat> ...will kill to possess. The magic that gives my puppets life was stolen from a tribe of ancient Egyptian sorcerers who pledged their allegiance to the demon lord Sutek. What Tulan stole from me, we must recover. Now, their only hope lies in Andre Toulon's deadliest puppet. Puppet Master. <laughs> Puppet Master 4, the birth of Decapitron. In the ruins of the Soviet Union. Scientists have built the ultimate war machine. A mandroid, piloted by a human soul, capable of destruction beyond imagination. <laughs> If you're handing the Mandroid unit over to the United States, I'll make sure they know who really built it. It had to be 
Speak Drago. He's the only one who knows about the Supercon program, and now he has it all. Right now, it is in your best interest to give the formula to me. Let's go. Mr. American Scientist, end of the road. Mandroid, its power is in your hands. A cop from another world. What's the matter? You've never seen a cop before? And a nurse shrunk by aliens. Just the thing to drive G.I. Joe insane. Will you get the hell out of here? Are teaming up with a big partner. She's a cop in trouble. For some deadly fun and games. Toys that come to life and kill people to help a demon from hell. Jesus Christ! Not quite, slut. You can go where those toys go. You, you're the perfect size to help me kick their butts. Let's start up the entertainment, boys. <laughs> and this time... This is that fun of the ass kicking. Get the hell away from me! <laughs> they're picking on someone their own size. Gosh, guys, this is the best bachelor party a guy could ever ask for. <laughs> hey, hey! Tim Thomerson, Tracy Scoggins, and Melissa Bear. <laughs> Pop goes the weasel. Doll Man versus the demonic toys. You love it. It's really gonna tear you up. For more information on how to get Full Moon CDs, Comics like Puppet Master and Doll Man, calendars, and becoming a fan club member. Call the Full Moon Hotline at 1-800-999-9559. Or write to Full Moon Entertainment, P.O. Box 526, 8721 Santa Monica Boulevard, West Hollywood, California, 90069. Thanks for watching. And be sure to stay tuned for the next edition of Full Moon's Video Zone.